So I've got a Mighty Mule gate opener and I've had multiples of them. I think I've had five of them and the control board keeps getting ruined on them because there'll be a lightning strike that'll strike somewhere around it and it fries something in the schematic and messes it up. So I've come up with a way to make what I call an analog version of it. It's really just relays. It's not uh, the only silicone component in, in here are these two diodes, which would be easy to replace. So the way this is made up, if it does get fried by lightning, I'd be able to just replace a relay or something like that and be back up and working instead of spending another $500 or whatever on a Mighty Mule gate opener. So this video is about explaining how this circuit works and then here in a minute I'm going to show you the one that I have made up. So I'm laughing because it's kind of a rat's nest of wires and all that kind of stuff. Now first of all I want to give a disclaimer because this circuit uh, is operates that gate but it has no safety features in it like a mighty mule would like in other words when you tell it to close it's going to close there's nothing that say oh it's trying to close too hard and it's going to quit the only thing that's going to stop this is if you blow the fuse you know if it gets enough resistance that the motor spikes and it it blows the um blows the fuse the other thing is if you use a button to activate it uh, you can't stop it until it opens all the way and hits the limit switch and then you hit it again to close it. Now it's got a remote control and with that you can stop it and you can make it close on its own or open or whatever you want it to do and I'll show you that here in a minute. But So I don't know that anybody will ever make one of these but I wish I had found this circuit a few years back so just in case somebody does I want to just take a few minutes to explain it. In case you're not, I mean, I'm not great at making schematics and just to explain how this thing works real quick and how you would make one up if you needed to. So, first of all, here's the battery over here and that's a 40 amp fuse. So anywhere you see on here where you see 12 volts, like 12 volts there, 12 volts there, 12 volts there, that's connecting to the 12 volts of the battery right there. Okay, anywhere you see that. Anywhere you see this ground symbol, like right here and right here and right here and right here, all of that is connecting to the negative side of the battery. That way you don't have to draw all those lines and it makes it really confusing. This uh, M, M red and M black, you'll see that a few places. That's connecting to the red side of the battery or the black side of the battery. Now this is a DC motor and the motor that's here is just the motor that's in a Mighty Mule uh, control arm. I took all of the electronics out and all I'm using is just the motor. Uh, and so you just need the, there's a red wire on it and a black wire. Now, when you hook this circuit up and you activate it, you may have to swap it. Where, where I say red, you may have to put the black wire and you may have to put the black wire where I'm saying red because um, if the gate is, when you hit open, and it start, if it starts closing, then that means you just need to reverse your, your uh, motor wires and it will do the reverse of that. So there's a little disclaimer right here that says that. Okay, so and this, this one is just another uh, relay that I added in because sometimes you'll hit a gate controller and tell it to open or close. And it's hard to tell if it's actually opening or closing because of your angle on the gate. And so I'm just uh, I'm going to have an indicator lamp that when the motor is is working, the indicator lamp comes on, and you can tell that you've actually activated the the gate. Because especially at night, sometimes it can be hard to tell if it's opening or closing. Okay, so let's get started here. Now this, like I said, it does have a remote control. These are the the relays that are uh, coming off of the remote and I'll show you the remote separately here in just a minute. Alright so you activate the switch and it, it runs through this relay which actually is a call I call it a lockout relay. Anytime the motor is running you can't hit the activation switch isn't going to do anything. That keeps you from turning on the reverse relay while the forward relay is already going. So um, then the, uh, so it runs through there, and then it goes through a reverse direction relay, and this just allows it to uh, go from open to close. Because 
if uh, like in my situation I have some pull chains that when you pull them all it does is hit this activation switch and so in order to make it so that from one pull chain you can start it you can open it and close it you need a reverse direction relay in there to do that and then it comes it flows over here and it comes to basically it runs all the way to this coil so first thing it does when you hit that it activates this coil and starts the open cycle for the relay once the relay closes it sends 12 volts to the motor it also sends 12 volts back through the limit switch and to back to the coil of the relay which keeps the relay closed when you let go of the activation switch so then the gate's going to open 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 until it hits this limit switch here are the actual limit switches that i'm using and i'll list these in the description and when it hits the limit switch it will break that contact this relay will close and the gate will stop and it'll just sit there now when this when this one opens it also it'll send 12 volts this way to the reverse direction relay flipping it so that the next time you hit the activation it won't activate the forward relay or the open relay it will activate the close relay instead and you can see if you follow this channel it comes down to this coil right here and then this side works the same way it's just closing it instead and it has a different limit switch here so when it is all the way closed it flips this and it uh, closes that relay right there now uh, this is on your remote control this is one of the remote controls and I actually lied to you when I said there was no silicone whatever in here this these bits are silicone and if lightning hit it could very well blow this thing apart but this thing only cost ten dollars so you know the problem with the mighty mule is you know the gate opener costs like five hundred dollars and the control panel costs like two hundred two hundred fifty dollars if you need to buy another control panel so you know it, it's you might as well just buy another one Anyway, don't get me started on all that. When you hit button A on your key fob, you're activating this first relay, B, this one, C, this one, and D, this one. Okay, so you have to set these up to where, um, like this, in this instance, I just want these relays to close momentarily and open right back up. So I took the jumper off right here and that means that it'll just do it intermittently. And there's an instruction thing that comes with it. The instructions aren't great, but it that's how that works. Now these pins right here, A, B, C, so the power comes in here, you put positive and negative there, and then your, your pins here, um, A is a normally open contact, B is the common contact, and C is the normally closed contact. So when you're looking at how like this right here, which you're going to control with button C, you're over here and you're going to do common. You're going to connect the common to B and the normally open would be to the A right there. So that, so you're going to wire up. This is your relay that you're using so that you can have a remote control. And so that remote control is going to be able to with re with, um, a being norm you're going to use the common and the normally open when you activate it it's going to basically it's going to push this switch right here and then when you operate b it cuts the ground to all of the relays and so whether it's opening or closing if you hit b b for break it's going to stop and then if you hit c for close it will start closing if you hit a it'll start opening. If you were to build one of these, you're gonna to have to have some basic knowledge of electronics, which is all I have is a basic knowledge of electronics. Okay, so that's basically how this schematic works. Um, hopefully if somebody actually wanted to do this, that gives them a, a little bit of a basis of how, how this schem overall schematic works. All right, let me pull over. I'll show you the rat's nest that I've got put together. Okay, here it is. <laughs> so this is my battery over here. And then it goes to a fuse right here. Well, uh, to a fuse right there. To, uh, it'll be a 40 amp fuse. This is just a 10 amp fuse because I'm not running a motor and I wanted some kind of protection in case I shorted something out in here. This is acting as my motor. This is just a uh, voltmeter. 
And so depending on whether it's, it reads positive or negative voltage, that's just going to show you that when I tell it to close, it's going to give you, I think it's positive voltage to close. And then when I tell it to open, I mean, when I tell it to open, it's going to give positive voltage. And when I tell it to close, it's going to give negative voltage. Then I've got, this is my, this is my uh, lockout relay, my reverse relay, my indicator light relay, my open relay, and my close relay in that order. Uh, this box is actually, it came off a Mighty Mule controller control panel used to be in here. If I had a bigger control panel, I'd be better off, but these terminal strips down here at the bottom, this is where I'm going to connect all of my uh, limit switches, and my power will come in here. My power comes into this block right over here. My activation switch will come in here that, that's on the pole outside. My limit switches will uh, run off of these other terminals down here. So I know this is hard for you to see, but I'm using these switches. Like this is acting as my, my open limit switch. And this switch right here is my closed limit switch. This is just for uh, testing purposes. When uh, If you look at my other video that shows the overview of this gate opener, you'll see how the limit switches actually work. And then here is the remote control that we talked about before. And as you see, I labeled them A, B, C, D. So as I was working on it, I could keep that straight. I would also suggest you label your relays one, two, three, four, five, and come onto your schematic and label it one, two, wait a minute. Yeah, one, two, three, uh, four, five. And that way it'll help you kind of get things organized. And then I also came back in all of these little connect components like because on these relays you have a whole bunch of connection points and so I numbered them so as I was tracing stuff making sure I got things right um, I would know where they were supposed to go okay so let me just real quick show you how this works I have a feeling that I'm talking to myself at this point and nobody is actually watching this video but uh, we'll see how it goes okay so this actually has to be connected right here All right, so I'm going to hit A. You can see that relay tripped, and I now have 12 positive volts. And so it's opening, 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 and then it's going to trip the limit switch. And it turned off. We went to zero volts. And, and now, not only did it uh, shut the relay off and stop the gate, it activated the reverse relay. So now when I hit the same switch again, the close relay activates and I get negative volts over here. And so now it is closing, closing, closing. And once it starts to close, this switch flips just as it comes off, just as it starts to close, that switch is going to reset. And then it's going to close, close, close until it hits this limit switch. That turns this relay off and we went to zero volts. Now we're going to tell it to open again. And it's opening. We've got 12 volts there. This one is going to go back to on as soon as it starts to open. And now let's say, uh oh, we're going to hit something. So we hit B to stop it. And you see it stopped. And now we want to say, okay, well, no, let's go ahead and open. So now we're back to 12 volts to open. No, 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 let's stop it again. So we hit B and it stops. Well, instead of opening, let's go ahead and close. So we hit C and now it's closing because we got negative volts over here. Okay, so that's pretty much the extent um, of how this thing works. Like I said, I have a feeling I'm talking to myself at this point. Let me stop that. I will list the components in the description. I'll list this uh, relay in the description. If you just need a relay to activate, say, like your garage door opener, you know, like if your uh, wireless remote on your garage door opener has gone out, but you can hit the button in the garage and make it work, you can use one of these to replace that uh, because you can set like relay A up so that when you hit this button right here, it just momentarily closes. Just make that, put that in place or add it in as a switch on the wall 
and uh, you'll be good to go. So here the circuit is. I got it all zip tied together. It's not quite the rat nest that it was a minute ago. Got the cover on the remote, which I'm gonna, this remote is gonna lay up in here like this. But, um, and then I'm gonna run an antenna out that'll go to it. And I'll show you that too later. But you know, this circuit could be used for, uh, it's, it, I'm using it for opening a gate. It could be used to open a door, anything that you need to move in, in one direction or the other, and then have a limit switch stop it. So uh, that's what this circuit you know, would be good for. Now, again, like I said, it doesn't have the safety features on it like you'll find in a lot of commercial things. Like, you know, if a dog or something got in between it, it would probably continue to close until it blows that fuse and how, who knows how much force that's going to take. The actuator that's in the, uh, the Mighty Mule actuating arm, it's got nylon gears in it. So, you know, it would strip the gears if it got too much resistance. But anyway, I'm not trying to make excuses for it. I'm just telling you that if you were to make this circuit and use it, that, you know, you're on your own as far as if there's any damage that comes from that. All right. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to you or at least interesting. Thank you for watching.